Hey, what's up? Welcome back. This episode, you're going to see how to deploy this Rails 7 application to Heroku. And yeah, so let's get into it. Actually, I'm going to start off on the Heroku dashboard here. I'm going to say new. We're going to create a new app. It's just going to be called, I don't know, creator platform demo. And we're going to say create app. Now, there's a couple different ways you can deploy. You can connect directly to a GitHub repository. Now, every time the GitHub repo it, every time you push to a certain branch on the repo, then it'll auto deploy. That's pretty cool. And that's actually usually the way that I do it. But today what we're going to do is use Git, uh, Heroku Git. And since we already have an existing repository, it's as easy as this one liner calling Heroku Git remote and adding like so. So we're going to say Heroku Git colon remote uh, dash a creator platform demo. And this is going to set up a remote for us. So if we say git remote dash V, now we have this new Heroku remote. And what we can do is say git push Heroku main, and that is going to push our Rails application from where it is locally up to uh, up to Heroku. Now, our first push, we see that this failed, and this is confusing. If you, if you run into this, for on your first push and you're on an M1, double check to make sure that you have run this command, which is bundle lock add platform x86 64 Linux. And what this will do is just, it's just gonna add a couple other dependencies to your gem file that lock. So if we look at the git diff here, there's now like a noko geary for different versions. And now we see this platform is here. That's because I'm on an M1, but Heroku is still running um, this x86-64 sort of uh, Linux box. So we'll say git add dash a, git commit, um, use x64, I don't know, git push Heroku main, and we cross our fingers and hope that it all works, right? Okay, so usually this is sort of a, a game of trial and error. I'll push, see what's going on, and then wait, and then do it again, <laughs> but, um, yeah, hopefully we're going to save you some of those steps by watching this episode. All right, it looks like it failed again. So let's scroll up and look at the errors. It says no method defined square bracket for nil class here. So if you get this error, rails.application.credentials.stripe with this thing or any secret for that matter, it's probably because Heroku does not know how to decrypt your secrets. So what we want to do is uh, pass our master key. So we're going to say, uh, we're going to set a new environment variable on Heroku by doing Heroku config colon set. And the value is going to be in this file called config slash master key. Now this master key is something you should never commit to get. Uh, it is something that you definitely want to keep secret. And it is the thing that is used to decrypt all of your secrets. So I ran it right there. I'm going to blur out the key so you can't see it and decrypt all this stuff. Because we don't have any changes on our local branch, one way we can attempt to have Heroku rebuild is by saying Heroku restart. So after we change an environment variable, usually the app will restart. But if we say Heroku logs T right now, this doesn't, it's not going to re kick off another build. Right, and so what we want to do is actually manually redeploy this. So one option is to just say git commit dash dash amend dash dash no edit, um, and then git push Heroku main. All right, so this is going. That's just going to create basically like an empty commit that changes the. I don't know what's what's in there. We pushed again, and now we just wait with our fingers crossed, and bated breath. All right. Hey, it looks like things may have happened successfully. It looks like verifying deploy is done. So what we can do now is say Heroku open. And again, we sort of cross our fingers and hoping that, oh no, sorry, something went wrong. Okay, so Heroku uh, logs dash T and let's see what's going on here. Okay, uh, active record statement invalid, PG undefined, relation stores does not exist. So we have that, recall that we have that domain constraint, the domain routing constraint. And so the very first time it attempts to use uh, a query against an active record, it's failing. That's because we haven't migrated the database. Um, if we look up higher too, at the end of the deployment output, it told us no proc file detected using the default web server. 
we recommend explicitly declaring how you want to boot your processes via a proc file. So what I want to do is create a proc file. Now a proc file lists out all the different process types and the command to start that process. So we're probably going to have a web process and we're probably going to have a worker that's going to be our sidekick worker. So web is going to be bundle exec puma dash t five colon five. Uh, we wanted to use port uh, 3000 unless the environment variable for port is defined. And then we're going to say use the rack. For the worker, we want to start up sidekick. So we're going to say bundle exec sidekick dash C2. That just defines the concurrency. You could also pass in like the config sidekick dot YAML file thing here with, I think it's dash C. Um, I think just dash C2 works just fine. Now, one other pro tip is that in your proc file here, you can have a release, uh, a release process type. And the release process type is something that will happen at the end of, uh, at the end of your push or the end of your deploy. And so this is where I like to put bundle exec um, rails db migrate. That'll run all of our migrations. So we're gonna say git add, git commit, add proc file, push it up to Heroku, and again, we wait. Awesome, so at the end of the build output, you can see all of the migrations are running. So that's super, uh, super handy. Okay, so now let's see if it's working. So we refresh, and we now have an application error. Okay, so Heroku logs dash T, and let's see what it's complaining about now. App crashed. No application configured, nothing to run, status, whatever. Okay, so let's see what's going on here. So we see build started at the end. Let's try Heroku restart. I had a mistake in the proc file. It should have had a dash in front of the 3000. Let's see if that's what's going on. Okay, so yeah, now in the build output, we can see the proc file declares these types of processes. So release web and worker. And okay, so now let's see Heroku logs dash T. All right, starting to up. All right, so now we should be able to refresh this. Amazing, okay, we see our page, that's fantastic. All right, so if we were to now attempt to register, we just say like test at example.com, password, password and hit sign up. Look at that, welcome, you successfully signed up. So if we go to our dashboard, we would need to create a Stripe account. Since you've seen the Stripe Connect onboarding a few times, I'm gonna run through the flow and we'll jump back after we have onboarded our Stripe account. All right, we're back and we have an account that is all activated, that's looking great. Let's see if we are able to use our products creation. So we're gonna say test, test, and then pick a cover photo for the product and enter in some amount and click create product. Oh no, okay, we've got an error. So we're gonna go back out. Heroku logs dash T. Let's take a look at the server logs and see what's going on. Okay, we have actually a couple errors. Um, failed in queuing active storage, analyzed job with sidekick. So we weren't able to actually add a job to the background with Sidekick. Uh, so that is something we can fix. So we wanna say uh, Heroku add-ons create, Heroku dash Redis. This is gonna add the Redis add-on. You can see which add-ons you have by running Heroku add-ons. And that'll give you sort of like the list of all the add-ons you're using. So we're using the Postgres add-on for our database and we're using the Redis add-on the Redis add-on is going to be used, again, sort of just in the background for our background jobs. Notice that the state of Heroku Redis is still creating. So we need to wait for that Redis sort of instance to be fully created before we'll be able to connect to it. So we can run this just a few times and check on the status, um, but that Heroku Redis instance needs to be fully up and running before we can actually attempt to create a product. We can also run Heroku add-ons wait, Heroku-redis, just to see when this thing is actually gonna be ready. 
So it's creating, 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 and we can just sit here and wait till it's done. I got impatient and thought that it might be broken, and so I tried to create another one, but I should have just waited. Boom, we have it. Okay, that actually took like six minutes, seven, eight, I don't know, but <laughs> okay. So now when we run Heroku logs-t, we should see some logs that look happier for us when we try to submit a product. Refresh, resubmit. Uh, all right, download key from here. Uh, another internal server error. Okay, internal server error, but why? What is the error now? Okay, great, okay. Could not open library libvips.so.42. Uh, cannot open a shared object file, no such file or directory. This error is because we need that vips thing, VIPS, that's the image, it's the library that does our image processing. And by default, we uh, when we were working locally, we brew installed vips, right? But when we're on Heroku, we need to add a build pack in order to make this work. So we can say Heroku uh, build packs colon add index one. This says add the build pack at the very beginning. I know, I don't know why it's one index instead of zero index. Like this is a computer science platform, people. Uh, okay, and then we're gonna say Heroku dash community slash APT. This is gonna allow us to install packages with APT. So now we have two build packs. We have Heroku community APT, we have Heroku Ruby. Now APT lets us create an APT file and tell it which packages we wanna install with APT. These are the ones you need for working with uh, VIP, with VIPs, I guess. Okay, um, or actually no, those are the dependencies for this other build pack. So we have to add another build pack here. So it's gonna say Heroku build packs colon add index two. Now this build pack is provided by someone, Brandon CC. Thank you, Brandon CC. Everyone owes you a debt of gratitude. <laughs> so Brandon CC built this Heroku build pack for VIPs and we wanna add that at index two. So now we have APT at the top, we have uh, this other build pack, and then the final build pack, whatever's the last build pack, that's gonna be the build pack that's used to automatically derive which procs to run and things like that. So we've got now a, an APT file, we need to commit this, git push Heroku main, and then again, we wait. Heroku, let's run the Heroku logs again, try our submission again with our image, cross our fingers and hope that it works. Okay, no errors, redirected to this thing. Boom, look at that. Okay, we have an image. This image was uploaded successfully from Heroku to S3. We can head over to S3 here and see some new, I don't know, some new object that was just added. So this is today. Okay, so we have uh, a brand new image. We All of these are the same image basically, so it's gonna be hard to tell, uh, or it's like the same two images. So that allows us to upload images to Heroku. So now we've got an app, it's being deployed. The, the next step is to set up our domains. So come back in the next episode and we're gonna set up Cloudflare domains, we're gonna set up SSL, we're gonna have a fully connected SSL thing with our custom domains and all of that using Cloudflare to terminate SSL with a wildcard domain. And then we're gonna have SSL set up with an origin cert between Cloudflare and her. It's gonna be great. Come back for the next episode. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. If you're finding this video useful, give it a thumbs up, that'll help other people find it. And if you like content like this, give that big subscribe button a clickaroo. Let's, uh, yeah, let's party. All right, until next time, cheers.